What's the word, y'all? Everybody knew that this year was going to be an all-time tank job. Even Adam Silver said before the season started, if y'all start tanking too hard, I might send you down to the G League, even though we can't really send you down to the G League. But I'm going to say that we will send you down to the G League because we know that Vic is that nice. Which is super interesting for Adam Silver to even really say, especially since the NBA bought the opportunity to, to put Vic on NBA.com's app so the world can really see how good he is so fans will advocate for loss after loss after loss but don't you do it don't you dare tank this season because adam silver not playing and well we got teams that are completely diving into the tank a quarter away through the season the houston rockets are three and 14. the detroit pistons are four and 15. they won tonight against the denver nuggets surprising kevin knox game surprising kevin knox game the charlotte hornets have dealt with injuries and they're four and 14 on the season. The Orlando Magic are five and 13. All of those teams have one goal in mind and his name is Vic. But then we have these teams like the Indiana Pacers who are 10 and six, a team that a lot of people, me included, thought were going to be terrible. We have a team like the OKC Thunder who've come back down to earth quite a bit after their hot start again, but they're seven and 10, but they feel too talented to be in that bottom section with the rest of those teams we mentioned. So the Pacers and the Thunder have a dilemma on whether or not they should flip the switch off to get down to catch up with those other teams and we're going to talk about that after we talk about our sponsor that sponsor of course is prize picks hit the link in the description and use code kenny because prize picks is matching all new players deposits up to a hundred dollars I love prize picks because it's just you versus the numbers. You pick some of your favorite, or least favorite players. You pick a stat like points, rebounds, assists. You see the number and you decide if you think they're going to go more or less than that number. Here's an entry from a few days ago. Um, they recently added six. It used to be between two to five different players that you can add. No, now you can do a six player entry. Poku came through and gave me 10 points in the first quarter. Joel Embiid, I'm sorry, I prayed for your downfall a little bit, but you've still been killing the game. John Moran got his boards. Mike Conley even passed it like crazy. Derek White scored 27 points. I think that was his season high. And Luka got a lot of fantasy points in the first half. And my $30 entry turned into $750. Won't you look at that? It just adds another element for me as I'm watching these games, an extra thing to root for. So hit the link in the description, download the Prize Picks app, and use code Kenny and, and go ahead and deposit something and they'll match it up to $100. Shout out to Prize Picks for sponsoring another video. I'm going to start with the Indiana Pacers because, well, they are far behind on this tank job. They are 10 and 6 on a five game win streak that nobody's talking about. And I think partially is be because they, they had one of the easiest schedules in basketball. I mean, you can only play against the teams that are in front of you, but they've definitely um beat up on some some mediocre teams so maybe that's the reason why people ain't talking about them being as good as they look right now but boy has it been fun they're one of these teams that before the season started i thought i would just watch occasionally because tyrese is my boy but no tyrese is having an all-star caliber season and benedict matherin as a rookie has exceeded almost everybody's expectations i genuinely do remember on draft night i was getting tweets from people that saying benedict matherin's gonna immediately come in and be really really good I didn't believe it. I don't watch college basketball, so I, I didn't really know what to expect. And boy, uh, they, they were right. W take. But they've been super fun to watch because I think they play off each other so very well. I think that Benedict Matherin got drafted to the perfect scenario where he's in a situation where he don't have to worry about nothing but getting his own buckets. He's got Tyrese Halliburton, who continues to climb up this rank as the greatest passing point guards in basketball. And then he's got one of the greatest passing secondary ball handlers and TJ McConnell. I went to TJ McConnell's on my favorite team, bro. He does everything you want a backup point guard to do. He's going to be a little menace, similar to Jose Alvarado before Jose Alvarado. And like I said, he just has the vision that you want from a backup point guard. But this offseason, you got to remember what the Indiana Pacers did. I think if you go back to my Eastern Conference prediction video, I had the Indiana Pacers finishing 15th in the conference. I had them as the worst team in the East. And the reason for that is because after they traded for Tyrese Halliburton, he played 26 games with the team and they won six and they lost 10 straight games to end the season. And what did they do? They sold Malcolm Brogdon at the, in, in free agency or in the offseason. So I was like, there's no there's no way. Right. I underestimated how good Tyrese was going to look in year number three. And again, not really knowing what Benedict Mathering was was capable of. I didn't really know. But even with all of that, this record of 10 and six is still amazing so that this crossroads do we continue to play with our current team 
or do we try to figure some things out before it becomes too late? Now, their schedule is going to start to change. It's no longer beating up on the Orlando Magic on back-to-back -back nights. It's like we're about to go play against really, really good teams. Out of their 10 wins, only two of them have come against a team that was above 500 when they played against them. So it's, it's not like they've played anybody just yet. But majority of people, me included, believe that that they were going to be trading Miles Turner and or Buddy Hill this season. A lot of us thought it was going to be to the Lakers very easily like that. But the way they are performing right now and all of these rumors that I'm seeing, I wouldn't be surprised if they decided to keep Miles around. He's averaging 18 and 10. He's shooting the best three-point percentage of his career. And when he is on the court, teams shoot 8% less or worse at the rim. That puts him in the 93rd percentile, ladies and gentlemen. That is close to Rudy Gobert this season. I mean, he's always been one of these type of dudes, but like it's amplified right now. So they got to decide, do we trade Miles away? Because right now his stock is at an all-time high. This is the best basketball he has ever played in his career. Do we trade Buddy, who's having a good season as well as, as the, the, the biggest commodity in basketball is the three-point shot, and Buddy Hill is one of the best in, in basketball at that, and, and maybe selling him right now doesn't hurt too bad or you feel okay about it because you have Benedict Matherin. You have a uh, Nimhard who's been in the starting lineup and been playing really, really good. Even though they got some funky jump shots out there in Indiana between him and Tyrese and even TJ McConnell's jump shots got a little bit to it that makes me like, what? They got some funky jump shots, but he's looked really good. And then giving a second life to Aaron Neesmith, he had a really big game a couple nights ago. They have this depth at this position that maybe you feel okay with letting Buddy go for whatever it may take. But the Pacers are, again, such in a weird spot because I believe there's value when you have a young roster to continue to build this culture of winning. One thing I know about Tyrese is that he wants to build culture no matter where he goes. He wants to build community in the cities that he plays for. When he played in Sacramento, he's doing a lot of charity work trying to build for that community. And now he's in Indiana. He's trying to do the same thing. And there's value in being good. But there's also value in the first overall pick. So which one do you weigh more? And I'm, I'm trying to look at it this way. And maybe this is not the best way to think about basketball and why I don't have a GM job. These are what CBS Sports or whoever the hell this is decided were the top 20 players in basketball. And I'm looking at it like, I think it's all right if you don't get the first overall pick. Because though they're 10 and 6 right now, and they're playing great basketball, they have the fastest pace in basketball, they have a top 10 offense, and in the last two weeks, they have the number three defense in basketball. Again, I'm playing against many great people. I still don't see them as a legitimate playoff team just yet. So if that is to be true, and they're not a team that's going to end up with Vic, I mean, I'm looking at the top 20 players in basketball. How many of them are like the number one former number two picks? There's usually good value and potential superstar players once we get to the sixes to whatever because i mean Giannis, you know what he was drafted kevin Durant, okay steph curry you know what he was drafted Jokic was a second round pick like how long until we get to the top guy a top overall pick it's like braun who again is in the year 37 so i don't know how he's doing it but again maybe there's a flawed way to kind of think about these things but i think there's a way you could teeter the line of being a lottery team but maybe not be in that first overall pick team and still building really a really good team in the future. Because I am a firm believer that Tyrese Halliburton is legitimately this nice. Right now, the way he's playing, if the All-Star game was today, he was he would be an All-Star pretty easily. And the way Benedict Matherin is showing his game, can't be surprised if he turns into one of the better players in basketball. So now we already have this foundation of a backcourt that, that could be potentially elite we don't necessarily need the number one overall pick to continue this rebuild. Even though, again, we're talking about Vic here. Vic with Reese would be fucking amazing. It would be amazing. But the likelihood of that, even if we are, if they tanked all the way down to the bottom, where they they got the, the, the highest odds, we still only talk about a 14% chance of getting him. It's only the flat odds make it all right. You might even get to the end of the season, and we have the eighth best odds, and boom, we end up with John Morant. Because that's what the, the Indiana, no, no, that's what the Memphis Grizzlies did. So, like, there's there's a couple different directions that this organization can go and i don't want to jump the gun because even though they are 10 and 6 they can easily go on a 10 game losing streak again i think tyrese is too good and some of the other players on the roster are too talented for it to happen but we've seen crazier things in the okc thunder are in a similar way but not to the craziest extent because they have a million first round picks over the next x amount of years but they started off the season seven and ten and Shea Gugis-Alexander is a legitimate, legitimate superstar. 
and there, there's a lot of conversations revolving around Shea and there have been since he's blossomed into an all-star caliber talent and, and the conversation is who's gonna trade for him the Knicks are gathering up picks because the Knicks want to be in on a Shea Gilgis Alexander sweepstakes I don't think there is a Shea Gilgis Alexander sweepstake everybody keep talking about his timeline doesn't match what the what the OKC Thunder want to do and at the, the way he performs and the way he is I said the same thing about Steph one week ago he is the timeline y'all he's 24 he's not 29 why are we acting like he's he, he's posting or getting past his prime he is 24 years old and the average prime in basketball is once you hit that 27 overall time oh 20, 27 overall 27 year old time he ain't even in his prime yet and y'all talking about him potentially being traded we don't know what's going through the psyche of shea but he has said on multiple occasions that he's here for the long run and I can understand why, because though they are 7-10, and 10, they have played better than a 7-10 and 10 team, if you ask me. He, single, almost single-handedly, has won them more games. Than that. And you have to remember, the, the spacing in the lineups that Bro is playing with is near non-existent. And he's averaging a 30-piece on crazy great efficiency. And honestly, they just drafted Chet last season. Of course, he can't play this season. And next season, he's going to come in. He's going to be rusty. Probably won't have the, the most amazing rookie year or whatever. But they have they have Shea. They have Giddy. They have Chet. I, of course, everybody in their organization would love to potentially have Vic. But it can be deeper than that. Same conversation I just had with the Indiana Pacers. That there is value in building good culture. And the OKC Thunder have done an okay job of that considering they don't have any vets. Like the Indiana Pacers have veterans on their roster that have been around the league for some time. Like James Johnson is the perfect example. I didn't even know he was on the goddamn team a week into the season. That lets you know I wasn't watching like that. But he is a guy that helps instill culture and just teaching these young dudes the way of the land. You know, 26-year-old Miles Turner is the longest tenure Pacer. He's teaching these young guys a lot of stuff. The Thunder don't really have that, and yet we're not seeing any any bad infrastructure in what they're doing. But because Shea is so goddamn good, and and since Giddy is continuing to take steps every time he, he laces up his sneakers, and since Poku is having the best year of his career, no, 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 no. Let's let's quickly talk about Poku because um, let, let me read you some statistics. This was written by Jaden Rule, um, and he is writing for SB Nation's version of OKC Basketball, and it is called Welcome to LoudCity.com. The name of the article is actually like I can just show you. What am I doing? Poku is finally playing good basketball. One hell of a headline. They should have bolded the finally. Uh, but here we are. He here's some crazy stats. The efficiency of his scoring output has been much wel a much welcome surprise. His first two years, he shot 28% and 28.9% from three, respectively. His shooting form has improved considerably. His legs are no longer swinging out, yada, yada, yada. And that three-point percentage on the season, same number of attempts as like the previous seasons, 41% right now. But this is the thing I love the most. Because the jump shooting, man, eh, you got a lot of time to figure that out. His finishing at the rim has seen considerable improvement this season as well. Converting on 78.8% of his shots from within three feet of the basket. That's plus eight and a half percent increase from last season and a whopping 23.4% increase from his rookie year. I don't know how sustainable it is, Poku, but he, he's, he's, he's taking steps in the right direction as one of the biggest projects in the draft class. So he continues to improve. Giddy continues to improve. Shea is still doing his thing and they have guys like Jalen Williams and potentially like five first round picks in this draft. So, so I don't feel like Shea gives Alexander as a trade piece is a legitimate thing or them shutting Shea down in the hopes of adding six extra percent to their odds are going to be a thing this season. Now, I could be mistaken. Who, who really knows? Sam Preston them are crazy, crazy people. But it, I still believe that this is a team that continue to play the brand of basketball they're trying to build and still look back in two years and still be excited and happy with the result. At the end of the day, it's not about what number pick you get. Okay, maybe in a draft like this where Vic is that, that's that player that everybody wants. It's about what you do with those picks. There are a lot of organizations whose names I won't throw under the rug that have had top 
picks after top picks and we can go as far as 20 years ago that can can consider to to be really really bad every single season and ended, ended up having top five picks every single season and then turn into nothing because they missed on draft picks it's about getting to that position and having the scouting team and having the culture because every player I've ever talked to always talks about it's not just about me as a player it's about what I'm getting drafted into to get the most out of your draft picks so we have these teams like the Pistons the Hornets the Magic the, the Rockets even the Spurs at this point because even though they started off what five and two they've lost every single game since then basically they might be in the lead for Vic but that doesn't necessarily mean they'll be in the lead for winning in a couple seasons let me know what you think i'll be in that comment section